Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to another Supreme Commander epic going down on this generated map featuring an eclectic mix of Joes and more Joes. That's right, it's Average Joes Day today here at Guilecast. Those masters of mediocrity return once again to show us why their mother still makes jokes about how long it took them to learn how to walk right. What have we got here? We'll call this Team 1 up here at the top left and this Team 2 down here at the bottom right, going first for Team 1, rearguard air position, if there is such a thing. It's Ad Lordy. Oh, Lordy, Ad Lordy. Going UEF, how terribly sensible. Just going to take a quick second, actually, to check. I've got the volume settings right. I do. Uh, there he is in baby blue, opening first air. Probably a sensible decision. Uh, team member number two, also on the back row over here for Team 1. This time it's electric blue. It's Nimushira. He's going Seraphim, opening first land. On the front row now, sporting the season's fabulous vivacious Violet, going Cyber and Blessing. It's X-Odd. Uh, he's going first land. And last but not least, for Team 1 in Cyanide Cyan, over here, another Cybrin. It's, oh my god, it's Papa Kababa. We'll call him Papa today for obvious reasons. Uh, he's going first land as well. So two Cybrin, a Seraphim, and a UEF there for Team 1. Let's check out Team 2 now, starting down here at the bottom right-hand corner. Rearguard air position going Cybrin. It's Cinerium. He's going Ferrari Red first land. Team member number two on the back row for Team 2 in Burgundy Red this time. Another Cybrin. It's Choco now. We'll call him Choco today. He's gone first land. The front row chaps, or possibly chapettes, we just don't know, for Team 2 in Halibor and Orange. First of all, it's Sean Connery and his mankini. Zardoz! Not spelled the same, admittedly, but that will never not be funny to me. And I've said it multiple times before. If you haven't got a clue what I'm talking about, go over to YouTube once this is finished and Google Zardoz Sean Connery. Yes, you will be blown away. Anyway, he's going Seraphim, opening first land. And last but not least for Team 2, in Mellow Yellow. Over here to the right, another Seraphim. It's Silence of Roses, which poses the question... Which flowers, or indeed roses, aren't silent? Answers in the comments section below. And while you're down there, smash ye old like button, for goodness sake. Anyway, he's going first land and second air. So there we have it. Racial comp for Team 2. Got a bit out of breath there. Team 2 is two Cybrin and two Seraphim. Now, what has the map gen done for me lately? Well, this is what it's done. Virtually no reclaim to speak of. A little collection here around these sort of groupage, little groupage of plateaus, if you will, sort of flanking this central pond, and then some more up on these this other group of plateaus, but otherwise nothing in terms of reclaim. Tons and tons of mass extractors all loaded up pretty much on the two team sides of the divide. A central pond, as we've already mentioned, which could prove fascinating, as uh, there's a lot of build-up potentially of valuable infrastructure including two people's bases nestling right on the shoreline there so whoever manages to grab naval supremacy in the pond and i imagine it will get force over they are going to do well big old lake down here in the bottom left hand corner completely redundant island with nothing to speak of so almost you could argue a waste of space don't expect anyone to be setting up shop there and then two plateaus up at the top right hand side as well as a little canyon with a decent number of mass extractors on board. Game quality at 96%. We're pretty darn happy with that. I think this was a ladder match actually. Yeah, I'm sure it was. This is 4v4 team ladder. And the difference between the two teams in terms of averages is 10-33 versus 99-3. 99-3? What am I talking about? 993 versus 1033. Kyle, get more sleep for goodness sake. So we've got a little bit of expansion going on. We've got the first few shots fired down here against Zardoz as a couple of units came in, I'm presuming, from Exod. And we've also got our first toes dipped into the water here as an engineer has thrown together a naval yard just off the western coast here of his base. We've got another naval yard up and running there for Choco. How about up here on Team 1 side of things? Well, there's one queued up. I'm presuming that's the engineer who's going to be in charge of throwing it together. There he is. Uh, but a little bit behind the curve, I think it's fair to say. Meanwhile, though, up on the central lake, it looks like Papa is taking the initiative. He's been quick off the mark to get himself an operational naval yard, already working on... Is that a naval yard? A frigate or a sub? What's this in the comment section? I can just look at the icon. I None otherwise. I think that's a sub. Yeah, Cybrin sub being worked on there 
followed by six frigates. Saab presumably going to hoof it right the way over here and force a denial. Not that Silence of Roses is even working on any naval infrastructure up here. I like what I see here. Saucy little wall off. Not a bad decision. Prevent anything from coming through. And I also like what I see here. Droppage up to the top right hand corner as Roses attempts to lay claim to everything up here. And there is, as we said before, a ton of mexes to be had. Three, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, fourteen, fifty, sixteen. Tons and tons of mass to be had. There's been some pew pewage. Not sure where that went. A couple of scout planes out as well from Team 1, just getting the lay of the land. I want an interceptor circling over on this side of things, presumably running intel for this inbound sliver who now has literally nothing to shoot at because astonishingly, Roses hasn't recognized the potential threat and gone hell for leather. But this is going to be a massive play, I think, for Team 1. T2 upgrade on the way for Papa, who is now working on his third naval unit and at this rate will be successful in claiming the entirety of the central pond for him and his team. Over here, a Suisal Seraphim sub belonging, say that's five times faster, but you can't, uh, belonging to Zardoz. Oh, I should have mentioned his name right at the end there. That would have just been the icing on the cake for my alliteration. Uh, there he is. He is pew pewing away at that naval yard belonging to Exod currently under construction about 60% done there but uh, if we can get another vessel in here he might force a deny only problem is that Nimushira or Nimushira sorry already has an operational naval yard a stone's throw away how much commitment do we have from team 2 to the naval game well a decent amount we already have a T2 naval HQ operational for Choco down here at the bottom of the screen if we can start pumping out some Salem destroyers from that bad boy team 1 could be in a pretty pickle in the bottom left pond however central pond still looking good as mentioned before six and three quarter minutes down how are we looking on the eco front team two way ahead 233 versus 170 pretty significant and they're up 6k overall so looking good down here and it's only going to grow that difference if uh, silence of roses is allowed to hang on to all of the infrastructure up here i imagine once papa has secured the pond he will make some kind of a play and of course if you can get navy down here he can cut the land bridge, uh, proper e Ukraine style, cut all of that off and isolate this top corner, making it all the more easy for him to deal with. So Roses pulling in some nice eco now at 89 mass per tick, currently chip leader on the board. Next highest is Scenarium, red player on Team 2. He's at 79. This is explaining why we've got this huge difference between these two teams but these this is the thing these are proper joes today none of this high joe arguably almost a pro difference that we see you know the 1300 1400 range no these are the joeyest of joes middle of the range bog standard joe blogs top rated people silence of roses at 1236 and scenarium at 1201 next highest team one papa at 11.25 and add Lordy at almost a flat 1,000. A little bit of forward pressure on the ground. We haven't seen an awful lot of ground aggression so far. This is Exod with a little bit of a point defense creep. You can see he's just dotted them down in true cowardly fashion. This is exactly how I would play. Get the T2 engineering suite on the comm and try and creep your way into your opponent's territory. Zardoz also has T2 engineering suite, also has the gun upgrade on board that chappy, and he's got himself a couple of T2 PDs. However, will he be able to fend this off? That Cerberus turret goes down, Exod rolling right up to the gates, or stomping right up to the gates, which would probably be a more apt adjective, and manages to take down that T2 point fed. Zardoz sees red, or in this case, Violet, and goes after the encroaching Cyber and Com. And that Com down to 3,400 hit points, almost going into the red there, but Nimushira is going to turn up and try and persuade Zardoz to back up. We've also got a small stream of Zooey's entering 
the fray from the southeast. He gets one shell off, lands it on top of Exod, and then someone pops him from further back. I'm not exactly sure what. It might have been Nimushira, but another one is floating in now as we speak. That naval yard's still not done, unless it was destroyed, and these are new engineers who are now working on a brand new one. And there I was getting excited about that wall section. Turns out these were, uh, shall we say it, poorly educated contractors brought in because uh, they bid the lowest price. Still very little in the way of non-mass generating infrastructure in the top right hand corner but all of these upgrading to T2 now is he upgrading these? These are in a more precarious position of course currently sitting at T1 but that is a wise investment not hanging around realize he's got naval supremacy in the middle pond and he's gone straight for T2 Papa now spitting out the sirens doesn't even need to spend much time on Salem's because of course he's facing nothing in the water on the other side of things doesn't need that tankiness doesn't need those uh, torpedoes he could just sit at range now and bombard however of course Salem's have the added bonus of going naughty naughty walkie walkie Gun upgrade on the way for Nimushira. Wonder if he'll go for T2 Engineering Suite straight after that to try and replenish some of that HP. Wouldn't be a terrible idea. That gun upgrade is progressing nicely. Wonder if he's got a decent amount of mass floating in the tank. Still some 1300 mass queued up, so that would explain it. Zardoz held his line nicely after that last attack. Going 2v1 down this front side. No help at the moment directly from Choco, who has his commander in the water assisting with development down here on this south side. Barracuda and Salem just taking some pot shots at some zooies there, circling in the middle. But this is an interesting situation now. It looks like both Exod and Nimushira have managed to get established and Zardoz who's been really caught up trying to hold this choke point and spam up as much T2 point defense as he can really hasn't developed his naval game at all we've got one unit of build capacity in here assisting this naval yard so Choco gonna be handling the heavy lifting for Team 2 in that bottom left pond. Stealth upgrade on the way for Exod. That's his second upgrade. T2 already activated on board. But Team 2, look at this. Almost 100 mass clear of their opponents. 400 versus 306. They are some 50 or 45k up on their opponents so far. This is uh, not ideal if you're rooting for Team 1. And uh, being as it's nice and easy, let's hear, nice and easy, nice and early, let's hear your uh, predictions, ladies and gentlemen, as to who's going to emerge victorious. Just pop Team 1 or Team 2 down in the comment section along with timestamp. Don't try and be clever and do it later when you've got more information. Where's the fun in that? Wow. Very successful push here from Choco. Sailing right up to the shipyards of Nimushira. Eviscerating everything. And now there is a vulnerable T2 naval HQ exposed on the coastline with no naval support to speak of. However, we're seeing some T3 air come into play for the first time in this game. A broadsword. Going straight after that cruiser. First one gets shot down, but two more come in to replace it. That will be the end of the cruiser. Crucially, saving that naval HQ. It survives with 6,700 hit points. But look at the state of this. Silence of Roses. 
so concerned with bagging the top right. Made no attempt to fortify this coastline to make a play for naval control in that central pond. And he's just handed it over to Papa. And I'm not sure how you get out of this, quite frankly. Science of Roses is now going to be caught in a death spiral of shield building. And potentially, I suppose, counter artillery construction. But look at this. It's not even uniracial. He has received. He's either received UEF engineers from Ad Lordi, or Ad Lordi built a naval yard and then donated it over to Papa. Either way, it's given him UEF shield boats. And that's a horrid combination, believe me. governors as well long range missile tech so he's also got to worry about worry about building tactical missile defense on mass potentially t2 mechs down so he was at 205 mass per tick down to 192 already this could be a spectacular fall from grace he's already lost a t2 mechs on the corner edge over here probably to that governor, if he can reach. Yeah, that outer yellow line, everything he can hit, which is pretty significant range. There's more governors coming in all the time. There's literally no protection. It's completely flat. He is going to have to spam up as much shield coverage as possible. He's already got four T2 shield gens on that northern edge and one in the rear. Papa coming over here to plonk down a harms. So Tech 3 Cybran torpedo ambushing system to try and ward off constant attacks by Choco. That's a lot of Barracuda subs, though. Wisely focusing on the newly constructed harms. HP on that system plummeting. About to go into the red. Papa and Exod need to be a little bit careful here. Huge wave of torpedoes targeting Papa's com. He's got a lot of health. Plus 44 hit point a second regen. Second harms that was under construction goes pop. Now Exod is receiving fire. His full health is 15,500. He's already down to about a thousand. As some more T1 subs come in from the southeast there from Zardoz. Exod now down to below 6,000 hit points. Below 5,000 hit points. But the number of Barracudas dwindling as they're taking fire from a destroyer here and a T2 Seraphim torpedo launcher and Exod is going to escape just with a sliver of health. Sub 2,000 hit points at the critical moment but he manages to escape onto land. Team 2 very nearly with their first kill of the game. Thwarted however by good naval defense and that naval HQ for Nimushira is still operational as is the T2 HQ to the northeast of Exod. Nimushira came in for another attack, another probing assault. He's got gun upgrade and nano repair now but Zardoz has really fortified this area pretty solidly. He's got a couple of shield gens Speaking of shield gens, one in the base of Roses going pop, but look at this. All of the mexes on that front plateau of the top right hand corner are gone. Two from the valley are gone, two from the rear plateau are gone. Sorry, all four from the valley are gone. Just a handful of mass storage remaining. Silence of Roses, who was pulling in over 200 mass per tick a while ago, is now down to below 100 mass per tick. But look at this! Inbound 
Scenarium with cloaking and the torpedo upgrade and T2 engineering suite, which is why he is bowling into this hostile free fleet, trying to save his teammate here. This is a gutsy play. Look at this. Silence of Roses has no response to this whatsoever. Scenarium with his sneaky cybran shenanigans says, I got you, buddy. Rolls right on up to the shield coverage and starts launching torpedoes from that chest mount. Needs to get inside the shield coverage. There we go. Picks off a sub. It might look like he's outnumbered, but they do a huge amount of damage, those commander base torpedoes. Shields starting to fail, though, in the main base of Roses. Governor receiving fire now. Has Papa even recognized the threat? That's the question. That's the view from Papa. Cloak completely disguising his location. The only real giveaway is the flashing icon on the HUD. Basically donating that or denoting that those vessels are under attack. Taking down the shield boats would be ideal, or the remaining shield boat. And he recognizes the threat and starts to move off. I cannot believe it as he saved Roses' base. He needs to shoo him away further than that, though. The governors can still reach. As can the siren, actually. But he's surely going to have to back up. Look at that. Two torpedoes nukes the shield boat. Crews are going to last a little bit longer. Broadswords come in, no doubt looking for that comm, or maybe just looking to put some damage on the base. But look at the number of air superiority fighters that Scenarium has amassed. Moves in to cover the skies above his teammate's base. On the ball as ever, and that is a big old loss for Ad Lordi. All air units destroyed. Do you look at that? Base more or less secured. All thanks to Scenarium. Fantastic play, sir. I salute you. However, we have a T2 engineer for Papa now setting up shop on the top right hand corner plateaus. Checking back in with the bottom left pond now. And there is now a T3 naval HQ in that position for Nimushira. Choco still operating purely on Tech 2. Eco-wise, Nimushira is pulling in a very paltry 88, though. Choco pulling in 153. So, shiny T3 units or not. Those totals stay the same. Sure, uh, Choco will be able to speak for himself on that front. So, Scenarium has shooed these vessels away. They haven't gone all the way back to base. They've just merely switched their focus and are now laying into the flank of Zardoz's base. Zardoz has a little bit of tactical missile defense. Some of this fire is breaking through. We've got two Seraphim shields which have capitulated. More engineers inbound from Team 1 to the top right-hand corner. It's an X-Odd this time. They're dropping a couple of T1 engineers. That's a decent number of torpedo bombers. Let's just do a quick air check. So, ASF-wise... 36 air superiority fighters on the field for Scenarium, who's handling air by himself for Team 2. And 25 air superiority fighters for Ad Lordi, who is also sole wielder of T3 aircraft, it would seem. Yeah, 
Look at that. A ruddy great battleship summit sitting off the coast of Zardoz's corner base, the corner outpost, and this is really going to cause problems. Trying to hold off that artillery. In come the shells. He's got engineers supporting the shield gens. But if they start landing shots over to the west, that would have been the killer right there to land those artillery shells from the battleship in there. But there is counterfire. That's actually quite a lot of counter batteries. Five T2 artillery pieces in that outpost for Zardoz, who's done real stellar work. A lot of the time he's been 2v1 on this forward peninsula. And he's also had to fend off now this naval attack. So these cormorants have been donated over to Roses from Scenarium. Give him something to shoot back at some of these vessels. There were a couple of destroyers there which have returned to safer territory. Bottom left lake being covered right now by Ad Lordi's air superiority fighters. Just making sure that those torpedo bombers don't get any ideas of migrating over to this patch. Got some submarine hunters moving into position now, looking to take some pot shots at this siren that's just leading its fleet, which is never a great idea. Oh, that was easy money right there. Another vulnerable cruiser just to the back. They're targeting the Salem at the moment, but that is a uh, prime target. I think they're going to get the Salem. Might bag both of them. to keep moving though, there's no reason not to chase, down it goes that was a costly little manoeuvre for Choco there I was waxing lyrical about Choco's superior eco, he's on 257, Nimushira still yet to break 100 but those submarine hunters playing a blinder on that last exchange but this is very concerning for Team 2. They're basically yielding the full top right-hand corner after making an early grab for it. They don't really have any way to make a play for it at the moment. Scenarium, who is outperforming everyone on Eco, pulling in a whopping 404 mass per tick. He just can't be everywhere, though. Currently out front guarding the shoreline of Rose's base and then also handling air coverage for the entire team. Sub Hunters starting to take a bit of damage here. Look at those kills. 12 on one, 12 on another, 18 on another. Nimushira, let's have a look at your kill-loss ratio. 1.79, not too shabby. Only person or people beating him is Papa, who's pulling in 3.8 kills for every loss. That is highly combat efficient. You don't often see numbers like that. Scenarium's also doing well on 1.9. Rose is not doing brilliantly on 0.19. <laughs> that is, yeah, less than ideal. But let's face it, after making that early critical error of not making a play for the pond. He has been up against it. Crucially, he's still in it. Thanks in no small part, of course, to his teammates. And now we've got a bit of a harms creep going on. Support commanders in play for Papa, who's just slowly creeping down this coastline with those T3 torpedo ambushing systems. That is less than ideal, but we've got a counter creep coming up from the opposite edge. Choco not doing the work with support commanders, but instead got that T3 engineering suite on the comm. And just building out from his naval yards. Or 
broadswords entering service. What have we got back here in the main base? If we're going to see the emergence of any standoff tactics, you would imagine it would come from some of the air players first. But uh, we're still very much in the pump up eco and build up production infrastructure phase. But look at this, and it's, oh, it's just devastating. And I knew this was going to be the outcome when uh, Roses didn't make a play for defending it. All of these mechs is under threat. At the moment, the base is receiving missile fire. I don't think he even needs to do that. Just drain him. He could probably, if he park up here, you can probably hit these ones also. There's no tactical missile defense over here. Just take out all of this and try and throttle him. Uh-oh. But could this be trouble for Zardoz? There's a huge wave of broadswords come in to attack the comm. A lot of defending ASFs already in place. Turns out there was nothing to worry about. Well, actually, it was pretty close. Sardos down to 3,000 hit points or just below. But there's a lot of flak in here. Mobile flak predominantly. Ouch! And actually, look at how thinned out that outpost has been. All of the dead and defunct infrastructure. All of those artillery pieces were doing valiant work a moment ago against that fleet in the center now a smoldering wreck oh dear could this be the final capitulation of this choke point summit fire returns to that position if it ever actually stopped of course we've got three of these suckers now and once oh dear once that is down and dead where else are these going to go they're just going to park here and Roses, who's having power problems right now, he's actually built himself a strategic missile launcher. Needs to get himself more P-Gens, that's what he needs. He's got himself a couple of T3 shield gens, which is absorbing a lot of power. How much redundancy has he got? Well, maybe not as much as he would like. There you go, starting on another one, and that's going to give him itself a, an adjacency bonus to increase the speed of nuke missile production. Arms construction crept just a little bit too close to Choco's territory for his liking. Ugh. And now to complement these wolf packs of sub hunters, we also have a couple of Seraphim battleships roaming around in this bottom left lake. A handful of sub hunters also from Zardoz. Naval HQ in play there, but no naval defences. Choco really should think about building some harms up here to help defend his teammates' position. Yeah, look at this. Zardoz has pulled his comm right the way back from that outpost. Still looking very peaky indeed on about 6,400 hit points. And that outpost well and truly cooked. And you can see the summits on the move in the background there, presumably setting their sights on Roses' main base next. 33 minutes gone. Team 1 looking indomitable. Indomitable? In, in, with the th very strong. They're looking very strong. <laughs> That's a word, right? Indomitable? in the comment section below without abuse if you'd be so kind strategic missile launcher almost loaded now oh and he's taken all of the build capacity off to reinforce the shields because he's under threat and he's so nearly loaded a well placed nuke over here could solve a lot of his problems but he has to weigh that up against keeping the shield defenses online. Wave of torpedo bombers in over the top. They get one volley away and then get slaughtered by Ad Lordi's aerial response. 
course, there's a lot of flak coming off those governors. Shield boats did their job. Oh, my goodness me! There's a the monkey lord. Where did that come from? Snuck up right through the pack of vessels. I wasn't even watching. And there goes your nuke launcher and the rest of your base. And Silence of Rose is now making a run for it. And I don't think he's going to make it. Oh, my God. I spoke too soon. The monkey lord targets the comm. And then walks away. Was he not watching? Oh, but the summit finishes the job. Maybe he just wanted to do it in style. So Silence of the Roses, the first person to bow out of this game. And it's the top rated player on Team 2. There's now a huge power vacuum up here. Scenarium is going to have to look after that entire area all by his lonesome. And that's how desperate he is. He's coming in with massive waves of T1 Jester gunships to try and deal with this monkey lord. That is not a good look. That is a wonderful way to project weakness to your opponents. But, I mean, if that's all you've got, and that's what you've got to go with. And because they have local air dominance, it's getting the job done at the moment, albeit very, very slowly. Monkey Lord making its way back towards the shelter of the central lake. Of course... Still plenty of governors under here which will tear these jesters apart once they get in range. Look at that. Beautiful AoE on those tin foil airframes. Another wave coming in. To be fair, they have shed an awful lot of HP off that monkey lord. It's going to need to shed and grow a new skin. Which is uh, incidentally how Cybrans repair, if you didn't know. A lot in common with uh, crustaceans, the way they look, the way they grow, the way their minds think. But solid aerial defense, aerial coverage over here, and that monkey lord forced back into the water. 20,000 hit points remain on board. Bottom left-hand corner. Situation has not really altered that much, with the exception as there's just more vessels now. We've got one, two, three, four, five Galaxy-class battleships. Let's just check on some of the other numbers here. Four Salem's and six Siren cruisers. Versus three battleships for Nimushira. And a bunch of these sub hunters. Four battleships now, as another one's rolling up. Zardoz slowly accumulating a number of sub hunters. He's also got a couple of cruisers backed over here. Ooh, that's interesting. So this is the main base over here for Zardoz. I don't know why I was under the impression that these plateaus were going to provide some cover. A very low profile and it's actually pretty easy for those summits just to lob their ordnance in over the top as you can see. Sort of zoomed out there. I thought that was going to provide some shielding. I really don't know why. Yeah. So Zardoz might not be in the naval game for very much longer. This is looking really, really bad for Team 2 at the moment. Their operational area is shrinking. I guess GG, says Zardoz, who's ready to capitulate. Yeah, probably, with three monkey lords coming your way. That'll probably do it. This is rapidly turning into a rout right here. As we move up towards the 40 minute mark, Team 1 comfortably ahead on Eco. Oh, I say that, it was a momentary spike there from Team 2 up to 2.2k, but it was just reclaim related. It's about 1.8k to 1.2k, I think. Spikes notwithstanding. But there goes the main base of Zardoz. Zardoz moving his comm further over to Chico's. Chico's position and now 
Scenarium at least has some T2 gunship presence with which to respond to these experimentals. Renegades dishing out significantly more damage. Adlordi tries to respond, but he is woefully, woefully outnumbered. Those inbound air superiority fighters just get obliterated, but it's not going to change the outcome here. Papa having a mass three monkey lords are just going to be able to tear through the main base of Choco. Team two, team production of mass now sub 1,000 mass per tick. It's only going to get worse from here. One Monkey Lord remaining, but at least five or six T3 mechs is potentially vulnerable. That's a lot of Renegades. Look how quickly they finish those off in the end. How many Renegades have we managed to pump out there? 85 T2 gunships in play for Scenarium. Who is working on a Scathis at the same time. I mean... He's pulling in some serious Wonga right here. 712 mass per tick for Scenarium. What is, where is it all coming from? So we've got... They're all power storage. He's not rocking tons of support commanders. Ew, Novak satellite from Ad Lordi. That can just trundle around the edges now killing every mass point that isn't shielded. Interestingly enough, it's being dispatched to the bottom left. Ah, wow. These uh, renegades all transferred over to Choco to try and stem the relentless pressure now in the bottom left-hand corner, which is being applied after Team 1 making headway in every other zone of the map, it feels. just doesn't look great. It's this, this little bit of the map versus everything else. Their one saving grace right now is they have air control. That Lordy definitely needs to focus on that. Maybe he needs to stop sending in bands of ASFs to their doom. Small numbers, but the Scathis is up and running in amazingly quick time. How on earth has he managed to pull in that much eco? Mind you, Exod is pulling in 600. Whether that remains the case after these next few moments with the Scathis up and running. That's a whole different story. Okay, so the initial volley did go over here, but it's then being retasked over towards Adlordi's main base. How will the shielding hold up? Novax is just outside shield coverage, so that's vulnerable. But because he hasn't had a lot of attacks, we've only got two T3 shield gens, and that lead one already badly depleted, with the next volley about to land. Oh dear. And he's standing right in the middle of a bunch of reactors. That's not a great place to stand. Had Lordy get a wriggle on. Starts work on a shield gen. I just I'd get back in here if I were you. <laughs> Is that another assault? Ah, and exactly what I was worried about happened. <laughs> uh, well, it's saying it was a control K. Maybe it didn't happen. Maybe it was just like, dude, I'm cooked. I know I'm cooked. I'm just gonna bow out. So Papa now gets all of his stuff. Not that that stuff looks like it's going to be up and running for very much longer with the amount of ordnance which is now landing of it. This could be a massive game changer and the breath of fresh air that Team 2 so desperately need. And I think that was another Monkey Lord which was dispatched presumably by Papa who's handled all the Monkey Lords so far. Ambassador Strat Bombers being directed against a Megalith which I didn't know existed. Scenarium constructing those. There are the support commanders. That's what's producing a decent chunk of his eco. They're all RAS preset. So he's been pumping those out. Apologies to all of those of you out there who spotted that already. We 
yelling at the screen. I was mentioning it before, but goodness gracious me. Yeah. Well, it was only a matter of time after those monkey lords came rampaging through Choco's base. He wasn't going to be able to keep up with the naval pressure being applied. And he is about to be locked out of the naval game completely. The last battleship about to go into the red here. Oh, so much ordnance. So painful. One T3 naval yard remaining and it's not the HQ. So that won't be building any more battleships. Even if it were, it would be a moot point. A lot of firepower moving in and this will be this entire west coast of team 2's base now locked out as far as team 2 concerned completely blockaded and that leaves them on this they're on this but they have the scathis and they are tearing it up over on this side of the map firing for full effect I mean, you've got to admit, it's been a very entertaining game. We're 45 minutes in. Map control-wise, it's not looking good for Team 2. They're being out-earned 2-1 to one in terms of eco. Usually, you'd expect it from here to go only one way, or at least 9 times out of 10 go only one way. If that makes any sense whatsoever. You know what I mean. Operational strategic missile launcher now in play for Scenarium at the back of his base. Working on the first missile there. Decent shield coverage on this main HQ. And I like this here. This is full Team Turtle mode now. Zardoz getting some engineers over here and spamming up some Seraphim tactical missile defense to keep the main player alive. Blah. That's ominous. Beachhead established. Look at all of those T3 land factories. About to start churning out bricks, I'm sure. A couple of monkey lords standing guard. However, massive whaler squadron attack inbound. Need to go after the bouncers and the bangers first. Which they do. Next up, we've got the Burstmaster Flak Batteries. They don't last much longer. This could be the end of a very short-lived beachhead. And after the demise of Ad Lordi, there is nothing, nothing in terms of air power that Team 1 can bring. This wave of spy plane, spy planes wrecking... Um, represents the bulk got there in the end, jeez, words are hard the bulk of Team 1's air force really that's a sign that if anyone has to now start pumping out air superiority fighters it's Exod, he's got some operational air facilities but this Scathis is causing all kinds of problems, the main base for Papa has been obliterated, he's now pulling in 790 Exod Pulling in 1.1k. He must have huge quantities of support commanders. Oh, who died? Choco killed off by Papa. But, I mean, he was effectively out of the game already. His base was gone. So he was stood outside shield coverage waiting for, I'm guessing, Summit Fire to take him out. And take him out it did. Oh, precariously placed fat boy. That's going to get rinsed. That's a lot of whalers. There is decent anti-air fire coming off those cruisers. That's really what Exod's going to have to do. He's just going to have to saturate this area with as much anti-air capabilities as possible. They really need to go full on T3 mobile, anti-air, and T2. Because they don't have the capabilities to respond in any way. This is actually very, very bad for T1. I mean, yes, their eco is astounding, but... Or comparatively astounding. 
but they've got no way to counter this air pressure right now. And with this Scathis just sitting there and a nuke to back it up, currently loaded, one in the clip, working on number two. Can they overwhelm with enough monkey lords? That's the question. We've got two crabs. This one badly damaged. Nine kills to his name. 25,000 hit points left. This one faring a bit Strategic better. With 57,000. There goes the nuke. Where is it headed? Oh, it's going for this position. Right on the opposing choke point. A tear a hole like that. We have got mass fabs around these mass points, so a nice chain reaction should help finish those off, but I think it's a place far enough north to take out everything. Yes, indeedy. That is a really good, solid place nuke. Stay on base with Ethota. Where's the Ethota? What? What, what, what? Oh, he's talking about where he's attacking, is he? Is there an Athota up here somewhere? Or another one of the other bases? Who knows? Who could say? Oh, I hear an Athota. Yeah, there we go. So he was talking to Zardoz, I'm guessing. The Athota I can see on the map. Drawing a huge quantity of fire. Probably doesn't want to stand there. But the Whalers dispatched once again to try and take out some of these vessels. One of the summits has been sunk. Wow, just tearing it up with these whalers. A small little air wing dispatched from Papa, just trying to take out some of these gunships, but they're going to get obliterated. Look at that. And is he just going to send these whalers in now? He's got quite a few of them. Haven't had a good look at what the anti aircraft firepower is like on this side of the map. There's lots, but I think there's lots, to be honest. But there's 50 T3 gunships in that pile. That is solid. Ten flayers at the back there in what was Ad Lordi's old base. So it's not overwhelming. Oh, look out, though. Papa's been baited into an attack. Zardoz is right there, but he's a paper thin, these experimentals. Whalers have caught up to them. Ethota coming in from the bottom. There's a couple of megaliths standing guard, and they didn't even make it to the shield. <laughs> However, the shields have fallen. I think they're just out of range of these battleships, though. Yes, they are. That is the full range. a summit or two in the center which is alive that would be worth killing off next look at it just look at it though look at this bizarre game and at the moment team two are holding and they're bringing in 600 mass versus 1.7 and their kill loss is positive 1.07 versus 0.9 that has been the story of this game which is absurd Another nuke loaded and ready to go. This would be a monumental comeback if they're somehow able to achieve it. I'm not sure it's the type of comeback that you could see in a pro game, to be honest. They would have found a way to get through. But it's the lack of air power for Team 1 and Lordy. I want to say drop the ball because you never drop the ball when you're an average Joe. You just struggle to pick it up in the first place. a little bit mean <laughs> but uh, yeah Scenarium playing an absolute blinder here six hundred and eighty eight kills for that Scathis that is pretty darn good going Six odd kills for the nuke launcher. Summits in the central pond destroyed, and for the first time, 
in this game, Team 1 look like they're about to be wiped out of the middle pond. Papo has hold it right from the get-go, but he is about to be locked out by this gunship attack. There it goes. All that remains is this flood T2 sonar system. Wow. Can't believe what we're witnessing here. There's nothing to stop these gunships. They can clear out everything. And you'll have one pocket up here protected by pretty solid defences. Look at all these burst masters. But the sheer number of gunships, I'm not sure that... Unless he manages to lose some of these stupidly down Strategic here, launch, I think he could detect. still take this with those gunships. Another new count, but it's... Where has that come from? Okay, it's not come out of there. Okay, it's come out of the strategic missile submarines, which I missed, which were still alive in the center. Just saying that all that was left was the sonar system, but no, we've got these two aces. However, operational strategic missile defense in play shoots that down without any problem. Still three loaded in the chamber. New beachhead established. Support commanders move ashore. They have a shield gen. If Team 1 are going to get anything done, it needs to be done now. They need to make this push work. Megaliths moving out to try and shut this down. And there's now three Megaliths here. Oh. Strategic launch detected. Those sirens just not up to it. Meanwhile, the gunships continue to clear everything out in Team 1's backfield. Current... Mass rates, 656 versus now sub-1000 suddenly. That must have caused a power locking. A nuke will clear the area out nicely. Oh, my word. Strategic launch detected. Scathis unloading. Now on the vessels on their western coast. Another nuke out from the main base. Papa is in the flight path. I don't know if that's headed in his direction, though. Have they scouted him? Yes, they have. So Papa is out of the game at 56 minutes. Bosh. Look at that. Team 1's key player out of the picture. And look at the mass points now. Team 2 just pulled ahead. 633 to 619. Might have been a power locking dip though as Team 1 rise back up into the 800s. But I can't imagine they're going to stay ahead for long. Gunships. Ooh, gunships taking a lot of damage. I think this is kind of unnecessary. Don't they still have the Scathis? They do still have the Scathis. It's tied up at the moment targeting these units down here. There is this bug to worry about, but there's tons and tons of fighters are still in play. There's a new set of air production facilities at the top of the map belonging to Exod. That's Team 1's only real chance of salvation now and I cannot believe I'm saying that after the way this game has played out. In comes the bug. That's going to get wiped in a single pass. Far too many fighters for him to be able to contend with. Some... This is just desperation play now from Team 1 who cannot believe the way this game is going, I'm sure. Another group of monkey lords. The last 10 didn't breach. What makes you think these ones will? But they're just desperate to try anything. Admittedly, there's one megalith here. Two or three dead crab wrecks. So the amount of defensive firepower is dwindling. But there's a whole fresh batch of whalers moving straight out to defend this is going to be a little close lead one down number two now receiving fire megalith under shield coverage further back opens up on him number two's monkey lord out of commission third and final one is also not going to breach the defenses wow <laughs> just wow torpedo bombers are going to finish off Oh, the last... He had a nuke missile loaded and ready to go also. Not that he would have been able to land it because 
as we've already discussed there was strategic missile defense in play loaded ready to go but now the central pond is finally done they've just had no answer to team 2's air control and that Scathis it has absolutely wiped the floor with them finally these Seraphim battleships which have been such a pain anchoring this bottom corner defensively for team 1 they are going to get eradicated Megalith moving up for support Team 1 actually still ahead on Eco by about 150 to 200 mass. Scathis has been retasked. Taking out all of those burst masters we were mentioning earlier, which might have caused problems for the next wave of gunships, which I'm sure would have been heading up there at some point, were it not for that artillery. go the battleships absolute domination all from an area bigger than uh, my son's trophy cabinet he doesn't play any sports so I'm not cross with him Torpedo bombers engaging the naval units over here to the left. Are they going after the Atlantis or are they going after these destroyers? Kind of hard to tell. But it doesn't really make much of a difference. Zardoz, who's still in this game, to his credit, in assisting his teammate. Once again, Scathis targeting the remnant of Exod's main base. There's actually a lot of support commanders still roaming around, which he's not going to be able to corner with the Scathis very easily. But once he's cleaned out the top right-hand corner, which he looks like he's going to do with relative ease with this gunship attack, sure those gunships will be able to find any support commanders lurking on the mainland and then it's just a, a case of spamming torpedo bombers to kill anything in the water and that's ostensibly game I don't know how Exod gets out of this holy moly look at all that flak so much flak yeah get the scathis on that I would Main base now pretty much destroyed. T3 air production up at the top of the screen indeed. He just, if only he'd managed to get this up and running, this is what he needed more than anything. If they could have locked this down, if they could have got back into the air game, killed off these gunship waves, thinned out these hordes of air superiority fighters, then they might have stood a chance at a strap bomber attack on that Scathis. And then it's a very different game indeed. But as it stands, that Scathis has been able to operate with impunity. How many kills are we up to now with that bad boy? 1,038 kills on that Scathis. That is grotesque. Now the nuke loaded. The nuke launcher's only got 103. Usually it's those that really rack up the enormous numbers of kills. But that Scathis has been running for so long. This might be one of the longest times I've seen a Scathis run and go unhindered. I haven't seen one real attack go after it this entire game. They haven't had the opportunity to. They haven't had the weapons. Nothing in range. No strap bombers really to go after it. Seraphim battleships in trouble. That one down to just 300 hit points. There is an aerial response from Exod. So much flak coming off all those gunships alone, but 
there is the aerial loss for Exod. Once again, allowing Team Strategic 2 to hold on to that detected. air advantage. Scathis needs to kill here. A nuke will deal nicely with all of this. You can put all of the flak up you like, but if there isn't an SMD in place, Then that will be it for air production and Team 1. They do have an Atlantis. I don't think that's currently building anything. That's going to connect. Yowzers. One hour, four minutes. <laughs> team 1 somehow just about still ahead. Oh no, Team 2 have just jumped up. There must be reclaim. I think their flat numbers are about 630 to about 685 in favour of Team 1. In favour of Exod, really, with his support commanders. Nimushira is pulling in a very measly 16 mass per tick. handful of whalers determined to get a kill but they're not going to manage it that megalith escaping with 20k hp all of the infrastructure quantum gateways iron reactors mass fab farms you name it all vulnerable now mechs here. There are mechs there. But, I mean, he doesn't even need to worry about it. It might help him, I suppose. But it, this trajectory, the way the game is going, I don't see any way back for Team 1. Exod is completely locked out. Needs to get, I don't know, a whole bunch of support commanders together, back up, massive shielding, SMD, Preferably with a stealth gen on the go in some corner somewhere and able to get some air production facilities up quickly enough. And it's just... I don't think that's going to happen. It's a tool order even from a pro, but from a sub-1000 Joe. Highly unlikely. I suppose you could go mass Atlantis just build a response under the ground under the water sorry under the ground something very wrong if you've done that attempt to get back into the central lake there's still a ton of support commanders here spamming up as much anti-air capability as possible Nimushira over on the far edge. That's the location of Exod's commander. Oh, an experimental bomber from Nimushira must have been donated. Although Nimushira is the Seraphim player. <laughs> Has he been building that on like 16 to 20 mass per tick only to get it shot down like that? Oh, somebody who speaks Russian, let me know what that says. I Actually, no, don't, because I want to keep my comment section clean. I can imagine what that says. And apologies, incidentally, if that's not Russian. I don't know my uh, non-standard or non-Western alphabets. I suppose if it is Russian, does that still count as a Western alphabet? Possibly. What an awfully Anglo-centric view of the world I have. Very uncultured, my apologies. And that entire southern coast of Team 1's territory now defunct. Look at this, we've got some T3 mexes. You can just wander around, finish those off. And that will bring Exod well below T2. He's already well below now. He's down to 456. It's 460 in terms of total mass. Excuse that. Why is my phone not on silent? My wife has done so well not calling me for that long. She waits until I'm one hour and eight minutes deep. 
support commanders searching for comms now, I believe. That's the view from Team 2. They really need some spy planes out over here to help locate them. Oh, there's the wave of spy planes. Look at that. Searching for the comm. Can't believe Exod is still sticking with this. If it was me, I would have capitulated. Well, Nimushira certainly has. There's the control K. Typical last before sleep game, it says, scenarium. Wow. Just wow. Just shows you guys. It never, ever pays to give up. I mean, not strictly true. They were in a good position from a certain perspective. Not from a territorial perspective. But, wow. Wow. I don't think we need any guesses as to who's going to be MVP for this one. Calling it now, Scenarium. It goes to you, sir. I think we can afford to give this a little extra speed. As this game is well and truly cooked now. Bouncers moving out of the waters. Another doomed Monkey Lord attack from that coast. Navy wiped out. Spy plane must have discovered the comm now. There's the assist ping. More monkey lords under construction. Needs a big old wave of torp bombers ready to go. No, he doesn't because the control K is real. Zardoz staying in it till the end. Not doing great on the kill loss ratio, but Scenarium 2.74 ending out that kill loss ratio. And uh, all of it done from this tiny little corner of the map. A buttload of gunships and ASFs and a big old Scathis. Just shows you when you have the right tools and the know-how what can be accomplished. Well, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you don't agree who is MVP, let me know who should be down below. But I think you will. I mean, let's be honest. Who else deserves it after that display? Single-handedly, basically, won that game. And actually kept his teammate up here in it after he basically failed to defend his coast if he hadn't have come in with his comm with that torpedo upgrade that base would have been destroyed base of roses would have been destroyed a lot lot sooner so very well done him well done everyone for a highly entertaining game don't forget guys if you've seen everything or even if you haven't but you just want to support me there are some 97 ad free premium casts available on the patreon it's a mere dollar a month so do go and check that out guys it's the best way to support me and it helps by extension in supporting the community so thank you very much. Until next time, guys, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.